Hola, buenos dias. It's Caipacho with the weekly Pele report, and it is June 26th of 2019. And I think we are officially entering what we call the eclipse season in astrology, and we have some powerful eclipses coming along. We've got a total lunar eclipse happening at 10 degrees 37 minutes of Cancer next Tuesday. And then we have a lunar eclipse coming up two weeks later. And of course, these are happening on the moon's nodes. That's where all eclipses happen. And they are, you know, in opposition to Saturn because Saturn is traveling along around 17 degrees, okay, of Capricorn conjunct the south node of the moon. So we're going through this period of the sun opposing Saturn as it comes around to the north node of the moon. And right now, actually, you know, uh, that sun is in square to Chiron because Chiron is in the early degrees of Aries. So we have a little bit of a T-square happening here. Let's look and see what else is going on besides these eclipses because there's a, there's a lot going on. Mercury is going into Leo today. And I just want to mention that, you know, Mercury and Mars have been traveling together since probably, if I give it a six degree orb, probably June 10th. And they will remain within that six degree orb until July 15th. I want to talk a little bit about that Mercury conjunct Mars, particularly moving through the watery sign of Cancer. But now Mercury is moving into fire, Leo. And Mars will be joining on Monday, going into Leo right behind Mercury. <laughs> Mercury is going to station at four degrees of Leo on July 7th and then go back and hit Mars again. So, I mean, these two, I mean, just think it, you know, it's fiery communication. It's hot headed. It is, you know, rapid thinking. It is impulsive ideas. I mean, it's... Ah. <laughs> Talk about that a little more. You can kind of see it going on. Fighting words. Mars fighting Mercury words. These kinds of things come to my mind. But we will talk more in depth about what that is all about. It adds to the, a little bit of the intensity of the day. So the moon, you know, is right now in Aries. Uh, uh, tomorrow, uh, she's going to move into Taurus and uh, conjoin together with Uranus. The nice thing is that the sun is going to be sextile Uranus tomorrow, Thursday. Yeah. And uh, and then she's going to move on, you know, all the way through Taurus, trining uh, Saturn and Pluto. That's pretty nice through, you know, Friday and Saturday. By, by Sunday, you know, the moon has moved into Gemini, into this opposition with Jupiter, and then comes into a square with Neptune. Um, so I think these are enough of the aspects uh, you know, for us to discuss for a little while. You, you may consider that uh, this eclipse uh, season is uh, re reflecting what happened 18.6 years ago. We have these eclipses on some of the same places. And you may want to look to see where, uh, you know, 10 degrees of Cancer falls in your chart. And then the next one, uh, the, the lunar eclipse is going to be coming up around 24 degrees of Cancer. You want to see what house what aspects because these eclipses are far more active in your personal life if they are touching points within your natal chart if if they're not really uh, aspecting some of your uh, you know your natal positions they don't they don't have the same amount of impact, but one way or the other, it is as if there is a super new moon. This is what the mantra is about today. This is what I'm going to be talking about today. You know, this is birthing, cancer, you know, new, new, new. Time for some new intentions, some new realities, some new potentials. So let's... Let me find a place to look at the camera and talk about it. All right, everybody. <laughs> are these the days or are these the days? Jeez, Louise. Did I fool you? <laughs>
that beginning intro that I took that at the Tabacon Resort uh, like two years ago. So if you've been watching the Pele Report, you may even have recognized it. Uh, yeah, I I was not there. I'm I'm home, but like I'm too busy. Mercury conjunct Mars. Opposite Saturn and Pluto. Get get all this kind of stuff done. Business, business, business. Ah! It's crazy. So anyway, it's not going to stop. It's not going to let up. It's going to get crazier. Eclipses have been known all throughout history to be wild cards. It's like throwing a lightning bolt. It's like a uranium blast okay, of the unexpected. One astrologer friend of mine said it's like having an astrologer come and sleep in your living room for a week or a month. <laughs> oh, yeah, because in and, and, and esoteric astrology, this is, look, it, it, you know, it's always put that when the, the moon comes in between the earth and the sun, it blocks the sun's rays from the earth, which breaks the auric field of the earth which allows for all kinds of entities and energies from deep space to come in. Some say all the souls that are going to incarnate for the next six months come in during the eclipse. So the solar eclipse is the big one. There's a lunar eclipse or one or two lunar eclipses, you know, on either side of a, you know, of a solar eclipse, depending on. But this year, we're coming in with a solar eclipse you know, on the north node, and then we're completing it or finishing it off with a, a lunar eclipse, okay, with the moon on her south node. So this has a couple of different factors, a couple of different things that, you know, we want to bring in. Number one, okay, the north node eclipse, a lunar north node eclipse happening particularly in the sign of cancer, means that it's very emotional. The moon is in her own sign, She's on her own north node, so she really brings in this very powerful emotional energy, an emotional spiritual energy. So it's a very fertile time. That's why I'm talking about birth, okay? You know, and it's a new moon. And, say, and the north node is about future intentions, future goals, future possibilities, birthing a new paradigm, birthing a new reality. Okay, you know, maybe birthing a new family, you know, making new emotional connections. So this is, it can be a very beautiful time. It, it, the challenge is that, number one, there's a few challenges. And see, I have to even slow myself down from talking because it, I get so <laughs> emotional about this, right? Mercury, Mars, you know, moving through Cancer. And now Venus, in, you know, in Cancer. And uh, yeah, all this emotional... Cancer is cardinal water. So that is, you know, moving water, like white water rapids, like water falls, like the crashing surf at the beach, Scorpio is fixed waters, like a deep lake that's, you know, just like still, right? You know, and Pisces is mutable water, just kind of, you know, more like clouds and mist and fog and rain a little bit, you know, drizzle. Okay, so, you know, Cancer is just like, it's like thick water. <laughs> and Cardinal is initiate, Brahma, you know, create yang energy so you know this is very you know as much as you can have yang yin <laughs> that is like you know the powerful feminine energy that wants to i mean it's and and it, cancer's got two sides it's even even the glyph right you know has these two you know, folding energies. And one is like the, you know, the child in the cradle being rocked. And the other is like the Madonna or the Mother Mary, you know, coming over the top. And, and there is what we can say, immature and mature. Or we can say unevolved and evolved. Or we can say, you know, there's, there's a whole range of expressions for all of these archetypes. 
So we can have immature, okay, Mars, Mercury, Venus, you know, Sun, Moon. We're going to have, you know, just like this charge going on here. You know, I mean, Mercury is moving into Leo, but, you know, it has been and it is just like really, you know, it can be tantrums and it can be impatience and it can be just like emotionally charged you know, spillage, like vomiting, you know, just our, you know, our guts out you know, on whoever is there <laughs> who's that? or not there. <laughs> I mean, we may be doing it to the mirror. <laughs> we may be doing it, you know, in the bathtub or whatever. But, you know, I mean, this is a time of tapping into and feeling very deep feelings. Part of this has to do with that Pluto, Saturn, South Node in Capricorn is cleaning out the karma, the old cobwebs, the old conditioning, the old patterning. This is a time of getting in touch, okay, not only with our needs and our fears, but maybe with our guilt, you know, or what we may be ashamed of, or our grief, big grief. Saturn is grief on the South Node until October. You know, just like there's so this is a this is a heavy time, and the and the 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 challenge is to balance, to not suppress the feelings and the inner child and the tears and the anger, you know, at our parents or society or partners or ourselves. But then also we don't want to suppress it, but we also don't want to just like you know. Uh, have it, have our, you know, inner child be running the show <laughs> and, you know, rebelling and, you know, throwing out tantrums and, you know, making demands and just kind of, you know, psh. so it's, you know, this is a, you know, it's a very powerful opportunity to mature and to really step into this objective mother, father, grandmother, grandfather kind of energy in order to just like really bring in calmness, tranquil tranquility, serenity, breathing, slowing things down, not making like jump rash decisions, okay, and just like throwing the baby out with the bathwater and, you know, sabotaging things that you've been working on for long periods of time because of some emotional outburst. It will also be a very good time to take it easy on each other and to understand that collectively and individually, we're all kind of going through this together. I have been very fortunate to, you know, uh, be present at four different births, you know. I mean, three of my children, I uh, I actually got to catch. I actually dropped the first one, but <laughs> very slippery. <laughs> talk about, you know, it's uh, talk about, you know, life and death, the doors of life and death, when people die and when people are born, okay, this is like the ultimate in intensity. You know, this is Plutonian, Scorpion, you know, eighth house, life and death. So giving birth is tense. You have to breathe. You have to push. You have to stay with it. Okay. You know, and you have to like even endure, you know, massive amounts of pain. And it's just that there is like, and we are. Together, birthing a new paradigm, a new age of Aquarius. This is the turning of the ages. And this brings up a lot of fear. What happens with your first child is you, you, you change. It's in a whole identity change for whoever is giving birth. From being single or in a partnership to being a mother. That shift of identity is the biggest identity shift that you can have in a lifetime. So just think of it on a planetary basis. We are going through a huge identity change. And there can be, as a result of fear, 
a tremendous resistance to this change. And we can see old patriarchal, you know, building walls, you know, threatening wars, you know, sanctions, you know, I mean, our political leaders are creating this massive you know, disaster, okay, you know, when it comes to trade and tariffs and all this kinds of, you know, issues around boundaries and laws and rules and borders and, you know, selling $8 billion more of bombs and arms. And I mean, it's just like repeating some of the same ignorance that has, you know, helped to destroy our planet, through power grabbing, through greed, through money. And what is it, of course? It's about resources. I've talked about this with Uranus in Taurus for the next seven years, the changing of resources, the need to invent and work with new resources. And so what are we dealing with? Freaking oil. The same thing that's been, you know, that we've been, you know, depending on and, you know, you know, using up and, you know, it's creating all kinds of, you know, drama it has in the past. It's just like, you know, so this is, it's perfect. It's perfect for each and every one of us to see the patterns, you know, the, you know, the, the motivation, the morals, the ethics, What's driving the boat, the bus? Who's you know who's doing this, that, and the other thing? You know, we, you know, we, you know, we're we're getting so polarized between the yin and the yang, and the masculine and the feminine. Okay, and the prana and the apana. You know, which really brings me to you know this eclipse course. The you know that you know myself and the dream team, New Paradigm Astrology, is offering. You know, the enlightened eclipse journey. Uh, you know, where we're doing live sessions, we're having worksheets, I'm doing a kundalini yoga kriya, balancing the prana and the apana. And the prana is the in, upward movement of energy, okay? And the apana is the down and out flow of energy. So one can be very Capricorn, the other can be very Cancer, one can be very yang, one can be very yin, one can be very inhale, one is the other exhale. These really need to balance. These, and, and you know, we can consciously do practices, you know, the breath work and yoga and, you know, other forms of mindfulness to really create this balance between professional and personal between our outer world and our inner family and inner emotions, between, you know, duty, okay, and inner nurturing. I mean, there's just like this whole, we're really being stretched right now. There's a link to learn more about this course down in the notes below the video. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll put that in there. But, you know, this is something that we're all going through now. It's something that, you know, the mantra is about this week with this solar eclipse coming, but it's going to be carrying on. Like I said, Mercury is conjunct Mars, you know, through at least more than half of July. And this is, like I said, the battle cry. Okay, and it's moving from water into fire. So it's moving maybe from threats you know, or, you know, tantrums or demands into more action. So we want to just like really, and like last week's Pele report was about, don't get swept up or swept away or swept into too much of the external madness that is going on. And rather... We need to accommodate. We need to find ways in our lives. Like I said, Saturn is conjunct the south node of the moon all through October. And then we have Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto, January, you know, next January. You know, we have this, you know, big conjunction all through 2020. The next 18 months 
are very powerfully intense months of birthing this new world, this new paradigm. So it's, you know, we got to hang in there and we need to keep our wits about us. You know, just like the midwife at the, you know, at the birth. It's like she needs to like really be present, awake, aware, well rested, not under the influence of like hardly anything, but really, you know, focused. This is really a time. And with all of this, okay, you know, we can really birth a new paradigm, a new reality new identities it's going to be so beautiful in 2021 2022 you know saturn goes into aquarius jupiter goes into aquarius things are going to lighten up there's no doubt about that pluto and saturn in the south node moving through earth heavy deep solid capricorn okay is like really you know, we are, we're like the chicken breaking out of the egg. And I'll bet that that chicken, <laughs> you know, really, you know, is pecking, pecking, pecking. I don't know if you've ever seen one, but it's a big job. That chicken getting out of the egg is a big job. <laughs> oh, man. And it's scary. We actually had an earthquake here last night. A bunch of stuff fell off of our shelves and we broke things and everything is the biggest earthquake I've ever been in. It's yeah. And, and, and more of that is, is highly possible. Also, we can have some real shakeups going on, not just emotionally, not just mentally, not just socially, but like planetary wise. So let's just, you know, really, and that's where cancer can also come in. We heal each other, we support each other, we hold each other, you know, we create the, a container that's compassionate and loving and holding for unity in diversity. And that brings me, that reminds me, on Sunday we are having a webinar, a free webinar that is announcing and giving discount tickets, okay, to Astrology Rising 2. We did one back in 2017. We're going to do one next May to celebrate Saturn going into Aquarius and the North Node moving into Gemini. Dancing, yoga, kirtan, the beach in Costa Rica. You are going to freaking love it, man. You got to check out that webinar. And I will uh, put the link for that webinar down in the notes. I mean, we're cranking it. This is this is the time where you got to crank it. We got to crank it. <laughs> Step on the gas, baby. It may be tempting to slam on the brakes, but no. <laughs> you got to, you know, you got to be this, you know, the race car driver is like on it, awake, aware, you know, gas pedal, gas brake, gas brake, gas brake, gas brake. Choo, choo, choo. You were made for this. You were born for this. If you're alive right now in a physical body, you came to earth for this. So like just, you know, rather than like, you know, duck and cover, run and hide, cry your brains out. It's like, no, man. Take it. Take that bull by the horns, baby. <laughs> I will not take for granted the gifts of Mother Earth. But do everything within my power to heal and help her give birth. You know, we, what can really help during this time is gratitude and appreciation for the simple things in life. The family that we're born into the loving relationships that we have, all the food and the nourishment and the fruits and the berries and, I mean, everything that Mother Earth gives us 
and provides us for. You know, we're pretty darn spoiled on this planet and we may not always realize, you know, how much she offers us and gives us unconditionally. You know, Gaia is such a beautiful example for each and every one of us of unconditional giving even though we are like raping her forests and polluting her streams, she's always giving. So let's, you know, and she can also be the, like the maypole, or she can be the crooks or the vortex. You know, she can be what draws us together. Our common desire, our common intention you know that you know she's the, the she's putting out the call that can call all of humanity you know every single human being lives on this planet <laughs> space stations excluded but like if there's anything we have in common or anything that we can all unite around it's helping healing purging purifying fertilizing assisting enjoying endearing you know giving gratitude and adoring this beautiful blue planet so yeah that can you know that can really you know be a a heart warming you know meditation during these times of so much maybe stress or disillusionment or grief or loss you know it's just like you know, come back to Gaia, come back to Earth, come back to gratitude, and, you know, give our thanks. So I will not take for granted the gifts of Mother Earth, but do everything within my power to heal and help her give birth. May you live in peace, harmony, and gratitude and spread it around. Namaste. Aloha. So much.